Welcome back. I'll continue to show you how to handle imbalanced data in machine learning classification problems with an example in Python. In the second part of the tutorial, you'll learn and apply techniques to deal with the imbalanced data using Python, including random oversampling and undersampling, SMOT, Tomac links, and so on. We'll use a highly imbalanced data set we've set up in the part one video. You can download the data and code from the GitHub link in the description. By the end, you'll be able to make better prediction models with your imbalanced dataset. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. So let's go through an overview of the six popular techniques of handling imbalanced data. Collecting a bigger sample when possible. Oversampling, which have different methods, We'll cover random oversampling with shrinkage and smoot. Undersampling. There are also different ways and will include random undersampling, k-means, and Tomac links. We can also be creative and combine oversampling and undersampling. Besides resampling, we can weigh the classes differently within the model. And lastly, we can also use algorithms that are more tolerable for imbalanced data. Now let's start from the first technique for handling imbalanced data collecting a bigger sample when possible. You might think this is silly, but you should be thinking about this before the other techniques we'll cover soon. This is a helpful technique that always gets overlooked. Expanding the sample helps us to get more information about the minority class. But of course, this technique is not always feasible. For our example data of abalone, there's no way for us to collect the measurements of more abalones. But suppose you're working in a credit card company. It is usually easy to expand the sample of one month's transactional data to two or three months. With a longer period, you may find more fraudulent transactions. This way, even though the data is still imbalanced, you have more observations of the minority class to apply other techniques we'll mention soon. When the data has imbalanced categories, a natural thought is to balance it. We could either increase the number of the minority class or decrease the number of the majority class. This could be done by resampling, which includes oversampling and undersampling. Let's start with the more popular oversampling. So oversampling adds examples of the minority class to balance the data set. Most of the time, we would increase the number of minority classes to be the same as a majority class, reaching the balance. This makes the impact of different classes balanced in the machine learning algorithms. There are different methods of oversampling. We'll cover the three popular ones. Simple random oversampling. This is a basic approach of random sampling with replacement from the minority class. Oversampling with shrinkage. This is based on random sampling. We can add some noise or shrinkage to disperse the new samples. Oversampling using smoot. This method synthesizes new samples based on the minority class. Let's apply each of these oversampling techniques to our example dataset. We'll begin with simple random oversampling. This is a straightforward approach. We simply take copies with replacement from the minority class until the minority class has the same number of examples as a majority class. We'll use two ways to achieve this in Python. One uses the pandas library, which is more transparent so that you can understand the process. The other uses the imbalanced learn library, which is less code to implement. Both produce the same results, so you can choose either one of them. Let's move to Jupyter Notebook. Again, to save us time, I've already typed the code here. This is random oversampling using pandas. MSK stores the Boolean values of whether each record in the training set has class being one. Then we calculate the number of extra copies of the minority class needed to balance the data as this variable, num to oversample. It equals the number of observations in the training set minus two times the number of observations being class one. Next, from the training data, filtering for the minority class of one, we generate samples of size num to over sample that we've just calculated with replacement. And also with random states set as integer 888. So this new sample of minority class is called df positive over sample. To get the complete balanced training set, we concatenate the original training data set 
and the new sample minority class. In the end, we have the new training data set with the two classes balanced, both with 3313 observations. To quickly recap, in this new oversampled data set, the samples for class 0, the majority class, are all from the original training set DF Train, while the samples for class 1 is from DF Train as well as the extra copies we've oversampled. Next, we can apply the logistic regression algorithm to the new balanced data set, DF Train Oversample. Again, if you're not familiar with using Python for logistic regression, you can check out this article. I'll put the link in the description. Let's quickly go through it. First, we instantiate a logistic regression class, call it CLF for classifier. Then we fit CLF using DF train oversample, the oversampled training set. Next, we generate the predicted probability for the class of one as Y pred. Based on test set, DF test, and Y pred, we can calculate the AUC metric. The AUC for this model is 0.83896. This is a decent result, but how does it compare to if we just use the original data set? Keep watching and you'll find out at the end of the tutorial. Besides pandas, we could also use the library imbalance learn to random oversample. So here we import the random oversampler class from imbalance learns oversampling module. Then we instantiate random oversampler as ROS to fit resample the training data set. This returns X resampled and Y resampled the features and the target of the new balanced training set. As you can see, Y resampled has two classes of zero and one being balanced as well. Please note that we've set random state as the same integer 888 as a pandas example above. So we are generating the same balanced training set. But as you can see, the imbalanced learn library needs less code to do it. Then we apply logistic regression the same way and calculate the AUC metric. It gives the same AUC of 0.83896 as a pandas method, since we've used the same random state again when fitting logistic regression. Great! This completes a simple random oversampling. You've learned how to do it with both pandas and imbalanced learn libraries. Next, we'll look at the second oversampling method, oversampling with shrinkage. This is based on random oversampling, but with extra noise. So the code is similar to the previous random sampling example, except for the extra shrinkage argument here. The parameter shrinkage takes values greater than zero. When shrinkage equals zero, it will be the same as simple random sampling. The larger the shrinkage value, the more noise we are adding, so the more dispersed the new minority samples will be. This is useful when we don't always want to repeat the samples. You can check out about the effect about shrinkage more on this page. I'll put a link below. So by letting it equals to 0.1 here, we make the sampled observations a bit different from the original. Let's run this. This results in a different sample, but still a balanced one with both classes having the same number of observations. We can again apply the logistic regression algorithm and check its AUC. This gives an AUC of 0.80599. Changing the shrinkage value might improve the result. Feel free to tune it as you need. All right, the last oversampling technique we'll cover is SMOT, Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. It's a more sophisticated technique. The previous technique of random sampling is easy, but the new samples are just copies, so they don't add more information to the machine learning algorithms. SMOT improves upon that. SMOT oversamples the minority class by creating synthetic examples rather than copies. It involves methods such as nearest neighbors to generate plausible new samples. You can read more about it in its original paper, which I'll put the link in the description. We can apply SMOT oversampling through the IMB Learn library again. The process is similar to random oversampling, but we use a SMOT class to resample. Let's run this. Great. The SMOT oversampling also generates a balanced data set. As before, We'll apply logistic regression on the balanced data set and calculate its AUC. The AUC is 0.79. That's all for the oversampling techniques. We'll move on to undersampling. As you can tell by the name, undersampling, 
will downsize the majority class to balance with the minority class. There are also different methods of undersampling. We'll cover three popular ones. Simple random undersampling. The basic approach of random sampling from the majority class. Undersampling using k-means. Synthesize based on the cluster centroids. Undersampling using Tomac links. Detects and removes samples from Tomac links. Let's apply each of these undersampling techniques to our example dataset. First, simple random undersampling. In this method, we take a sample from the majority class to have the same size as the minority class. So there are risks of removing useful information from the dataset. Again, we'll use two ways to achieve this in Python. The pandas library and a balanced learn library. Both can produce the same results, so you can choose either one of them. The process is similar to oversampling with pandas. We grab the booleans to show the observations of class 0 and class 1 from DF train. Then we sample the negative class from DF train, a size of this, which is the number of observations in class 1, and use a random state of 888 again. So this DF negative undersample stores a sample of negative class of 0, but of the same size as a positive class of 1. Then we can concatenate this to combine the negative sample and the original positive sample from DF train as a new balanced dataset DF train under sample. Please note that the sampling process is without replacement in this example. We didn't put replace equals true here, since we are undersampling from a larger sample. This results in a new balanced training set. Both classes have 26 observations. We also apply the logistic regression and calculate AUC. The AUC is 0.646. This is much lower than the oversampling techniques. This is because the minority class has a small number of samples, only 26. We removed a lot of information when undersampling. Next, we'll use the imbalanced learn library to random undersample. The process is also similar to before, but we use the random undersampler class. After running the code, we get a balanced data set of the same size. And applying logistic regression on this data set produces the same AUC as pandas undersampling, since we use the same random state everywhere. All right, this closes random undersampling. Next, let's look at k-means. We could also use a cluster centroid of the k-means method as a new sample of the majority class. This means a new sample of the majority class is not the original data anymore. They are synthesized with cluster centroids, so the new sample should be more representative of the actual majority class data. We can again use the imbalanced learn library. There's a cluster centroids class. The process is similar to before. This code undersamples the majority class to be, to be the same as the minority class using the cluster centroids. After applying logistic regression on the new balanced data set, we get an AUC of 0.63. Again, the value is low due to the loss of information. Next, let's look at the Tomac links undersampling approach. This method detects Tomac links and removes samples based on them. What is a Tomac link? It is between two samples of different classes. When the two samples are the nearest neighbors of each other, they form a Tomac link. In our example of the binary classification problem, a Tomac link is a pair of examples from each class that is the closest neighbor across the dataset. You can see that on this chart, all three pairs of snails are the closest neighbors from two different classes. After detecting such a link, we could remove data within the pair. Usually we remove the sample from the majority class to achieve undersampling. This removes the majority class close to the minority class, so removes ambiguity between the two classes. So undersampling with Tomac links cleans up the overlaps between classes making them easier to distinguish. We can use imbalance learns Tomac links class to do this. Note that as we described, there's no randomness with Tomac links, so we don't have the random state parameter here. This returns a new sample that's not balanced. Why is that? By default, Tomac links undersampling only removes the majority class that is close to the minority class. So there's still a lot more majority class, the data remains imbalanced. So in reality, we would combine the Tomac links approach with other techniques. We'll give an example after this. With Tomac links undersampling method by itself, 
The AUC of logistic regression is 0.68. That's it for undersampling. Next, we'll look at the hybrid approach. Each of the oversampling and undersampling techniques has its pros and cons. Sometimes it's good to mix and combine their strengths. We'll look at an example of oversampling using SMOT first and then undersampling using Tomac Lynx. Let's go back to the notebook. The SMOT oversampling approach could generate noisy samples since it creates synthetic data. To solve this problem, after SMOT, we could use undersampling techniques to clean up. We'll use a Tomac Lynx undersampling technique in this example. Within the imbalanced learn library, there's a SMOT Tomac class that can do this. This results in a balanced data set with each class of size 3309. Let's think about the details. As you may recall, the original training set has class 0 of size 3313 and class 1 of size 26. The SMOT Tomac approach first oversampled with SMOT, which results in a sample with both classes of size 3313. Then the Tomac Lynx technique kicks in and cleans up the Lynx, resulting in fewer samples in both classes. In this SMOT Tomac technique, the Tomac Lynx are all removed. This means a pair of samples from both the majority and minority classes that form a Tomac Link are removed. Therefore, this results in a dataset with two classes of the same size. If we run the same code to apply logistic regression, the AUC of the SMOT Tomac technique is 0.79. There are other ways to combine the techniques. You can be creative. Besides resampling data, we can also balance the classes by weighing the data differently. We usually consider each observation equally with a weight value of 1. But for imbalanced data sets, we can balance the classes by putting more weight on the minority classes. For example, suppose we want the overall weights of the minority and majority classes to be equal. In that case, we can use the compute class weight function from scikit-learn. This code, with argument balanced, estimates weights for our imbalanced training dataset. This means that if we want the dataset to be balanced, we need to weigh the majority class at 0.5 and the minority class at 64.2, so a much higher weight for the minority class. Let's verify that these weights can indeed balance the dataset. Using this code, we multiply the counts of each class by the respective weights. Both of them give the same number of 1669.5. So by applying these weights, the majority and minority classes would be equally weighted. These two sum up to 3339, which is the total number of observations in DF train. So equivalent to if we just weigh each data by one. All right, so now you've got the idea of how to weigh classes differently. What does this mean for a machine learning algorithm? The different weights makes it cost more to misclassify a minority class than the majority class. This supports our goal of classifying the minority class. In the logistic regression class within sklearn, we use a parameter class weight to apply different weights to balance the data. So we actually don't need to go through the calculation above. We can directly apply logistic regression to the differently weighted classes using the extra argument class weight equals balanced. The AUC of this technique is 0.827, which is good. Besides changing the weights of the two classes to balance them, we can also specify custom weights of positive and negative classes. For example, here we weigh class 1 by 100 times more than class 0. Now let's run it. This actually returns an AUC that's higher at 0.837. This is great. So far, we've been using the logistic regression algorithm. There are other machine learning algorithms that are more tolerant of imbalanced data, for example, decision tree-based models. We won't show examples of these algorithms, but we've written about them before, which I'll put links in the descriptions. And if you're interested, check out this paper. This survey reviewed and compared different imbalanced data sets, balancing techniques, and machine learning algorithms. I'll leave the link in the description. They found that the simple linear algorithms, like logistic regression, benefited more from the balancing techniques. While for more complicated models, such as random forest and XGBoost, the results are mixed. So in conclusion, they recommend balancing data for linear models. For example, for our Abalone dataset, 
If we apply the logistic regression to the original dataset DF train, we get an AUC of 0.68. This is lower than a few of the balancing techniques we've tried, so the balancing techniques did help. And that's all the techniques for handling imbalanced data. There are also other techniques, but these should be a good starting point for you to explore. You might wonder, what is the best technique to apply? There's no single best one. You need to try different techniques and compare their performance with the original dataset. It really depends on your dataset and your algorithms. In this part two of the imbalanced data tutorial, you've learned about six techniques to handle imbalanced data in machine learning classification in Python. Hope now you're ready to try different techniques. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.